Hi there. We talked today in class about rotations, which is the third transformation that we're looking at. Um, we looked at translations and then reflections. So now we're on rotations. With a rotation, a rotation means to turn. And we're always going to be turning about some sort of point of rotation. And number one here, we're going to be turning around the origin. And then we're going to be turning some number of degrees. Um, the ones we're going to be looking at are 180, 90, and 270. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a little key for myself up here just to make sure that I remember these. A 90 degree rotation is one quadrant turn. Every point is going to end up one quadrant over from where it started. Which direction depends on what they tell you. Sometimes they'll say clockwise, sometimes they'll say counterclockwise. 180 degrees is two quadrant turns, which means every point is going to be two quadrants from where it started. And 270 degrees is three quadrant turns, which means every point is going to end up three quadrants from where it started. So in number one here, I'm told to rotate 180 degrees about the origin. So I'm going to go ahead and take my patty paper. I'm going to line this up and I'm going to sketch in my shape. And again, I'm going to label my points just like I did with reflections so that when I'm done with the rotation, it's easy for me to label my primes. In this case, I'm going to be rotating about the origin. That's my point of rotation. And so I'm going to draw in a little marker very carefully right at that point, right where the x and the y axis intersect. That's going to make sure that as I turn, I make sure to do a full 90 or a full 180 or a full 270 degree turn. Otherwise, it's possible that I'll think I got close. I'll go ahead and demonstrate here 90 degrees. And be like, oh yeah, that looks like it's about 90. But when you look at your marker, that is not lined up on the x and the y axis. For it to be a full 90 degree turn, that marker should be able to be lined up again like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back. 180 degrees is two quadrant turns. <coughs> They don't say whether to do clockwise or counterclockwise because it doesn't matter. If I turn this two quadrant turns clockwise, I end up here. And if you notice, my P is in the third quadrant. Going back, I'm going to turn the other way just to make sure that we all see that it doesn't matter whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. If I turn the other way, counterclockwise, my P still ends up in the third quadrant. Okay. So no matter what, you'll end up in the same place with 180 degrees. Okay. Make sure your marker gets lined up again. And then if we sketch in really dark, we'll get an outline of where our image should be located. And when I'm trying to figure out what to name them, that's where your labeling your points comes in handy. So this is N, so this is N prime. This is K, so this is K prime. This is F, so this is F prime. And this is our last one, which is P prime. And that's a rotation. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do one more. We're rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, so that's where my marker is going to go again. I'm going to go ahead and line this up, trace in my shape, and label my points. So this is B, X, and N. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in my marker carefully right on that origin, right where they intersect. 
And in this one, I'm going to be going 90 degrees counterclockwise, which means against the clock, right? When you look at a clock, the red hand is always turning in the clockwise direction. We're going to go the opposite of the, the red hand, right? And so counterclockwise means we're going to turn this way. One turn, right? And line that origin back up again, or line that marker back up on the origin. And then if you trace in really darkly, you'll get an outline of where this is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So now we are at x prime, n prime, and b prime. And that's a rotation. Okay, so the second part of your homework assignment is on the back, in which case you're just supposed to describe the transformation that has occurred. Again, patty paper might come in handy as you're trying to figure out exactly what took place. For example, when we're looking at number seven, I might take this and trace my original, my pre-image. And again, remember we can tell which one's a pre-image by which one doesn't have those primes. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and label the K, the B, the P, and the H, so that when I turn it, it'll be easy to see when it's lined up on their respective primes. And so if you can't automatically see that it's a rotation, you might want to just play with it at first. See, you know, can I just slide it and get it to land? Can I flip it and get it to land? No. Okay, what if I turn it? Oh yeah, if I turn it, my B lands on top of the B prime, the P on top of the P prime, etc. Well, what is a turn? It's a rotation. So you're going to say, okay, I'm going to rotate. In this case, we're going to be rotating about the origin. I'm going to go ahead and draw my marker in. Well, the question is, how many times did I turn? And you get to choose. Do you want to do clockwise or counterclockwise? Might do clockwise, maybe. Okay, so if we do it clockwise, we turn one turn clockwise. We're landed on top. One turn is 90 degrees. Again, I turned clockwise. And then my marker was placed on the origin, so it's going to be about the origin. Another equally accurate answer would be if you started at the beginning again and you said, well, I don't want to turn clockwise, I want to turn counterclockwise. Okay, let's turn counterclockwise. Let's turn one, not lined up, two, not lined up, three, we lined up. So three turns counterclockwise, so we could say rotate, three turns is 270 degrees, counterclockwise, 